Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I am Brad, here with Doug. Hi. One of the games Doug's had his eye on for a long time has been Enter the Gungeon. And yes. this game recently got a Switch release. They played around with it a bit. I don't know if it was kind of patched or new content or what, but I know they did a whole bunch yeah. of new stuff that they were trying to bring some more people into this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it was like there was the game had released. It got some like pretty good reviews, but there's all these there's people talking about just like general because um, a lot of it's based on randomness that sometimes the randomness didn't feel fair. So they actually just like completely rebalanced the game. Um and then they put it on sale for half off, and that and then I had a switch that was gathering dust. So I was like, I should probably go get this. Because <laughs> <laughs> every once in a blue moon, there is a game that I feel is like really good for handheld and random dungeon crawlers is definitely it. Yeah, those <laughs> feel like this is the this is the key market for that switch where it's like I can play, sit down on my couch, play this on the TV, or I can just go sit around and do whatever I want and play this. So definitely a podcast game. <laughs> yes. So I know what's kind of set this game apart is the setting. It had a really kind of different idea, tone, setting, uh, and using guns as like a main theme somehow or another, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, yeah, I, I think the thing I liked most about this game was actually the setting and tone, because I actually want to start about that, start talking about that more than the gameplay. Because I feel like a lot of these sort of dungeon crawlers and roguelites, they like to have sort of like a kind of like hardcoreness to it, like deep dark depressing you're gonna die a lot and this one is just very silly um it's kind of a comedy i wouldn't call it a comedy game because it's not particularly funny <laughs> but they have very silly enemies they have uh, very silly guns and weapons and it all feels very very silly um because basically binding the isaac is not silly it's just like really weird dark messed up tone that's supposed to be gross yeah and like running and and it's like this one's just like very light-hearted um and i just really like that immediately it immediately, like drew me in because it's not like Okay, they realize that this is a dumb game. They realize that the death mechanic is kind of silly, and and all the animations are really fun, and the enemies are really fun, and the game like literally you you start the game and they actually have a theme song with lyrics. And it's like nice. enter the gungeon. Enter. I was like, I am in. That is what, that's <laughs> one of those things that I think right there that game instantly yeah. goes up in my book. Like you've got your own theme song, you're you're in easy. <laughs> Yeah, and I think and like the in the lyrics, it's like it is actually kind of a neat image. Like the starter image is like a like a gunslinger in silhouette looking up at this like huge tower in the distance, and like they're playing this like fun song in the background. It's like oh, I'm it. It does this kind of neat play on like yes, we're dumb and silly, but there are actually some pretty cool aspects. And it's like <laughs> kind of neat and like um, so I just really really like the tone um, I, like immediately off the bat, and that's like and kind of that silly tone kind of carries throughout because it's based on sort of Dungeons and Dragons monsters with gun puns. So like a gore gun, a what are some of the other ones? Um instead of a mind flare, a mine like like mines that explode, a mine flinger because he throws mines. It's just very <laughs> dumb puns throughout. And very into this. Very into it. Nice. So all of those things kind of look and they kind of look and resemble like the D D counterparts. Like are they yeah. similar in appearance or is it kind of just in name only oh no i mean it's like medusa carrying two uzis <laughs> <laughs> i mean that like, works <laughs> it's, it's like a cthulhu looking monster who is chucking like landmines with little smiley faces um it's really funny because like all of the all the enemies look like very silly and not unless actually as you get further in the game like the enemies look kind of cooler more hardcore but like your basic enemies are like these very silly little bullet guys that kind of like they wobble as they walk because they don't walk very well. Mm -hmm. And then they, their guns, they are bullets that shoot guns. Um, it's just, and they acknowledge that this is very stupid. So everything is very stupid, very silly animations that I very much enjoy. <laughs> but it's not done in like, because I guess sometimes when you get into that stupid, silly mindset, I feel like it's, oh, look how ironic we are. And look how like, oh, 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 you know what I mean? Like that. It just almost plays oh. itself too far to where you're like, okay, yes, I get it, move on. No, it's um, it's it's interesting because I feel like that sort of humor, the stuff where it, it kind of goes off the deep on what you're talking about, is like, let's just bring in referential stuff all the time, and that will be the humor. To yeah. me, like the really bad humor is the like the referential stuff all the time. No, it definitely revels in itself because, um, like besides just being D and D monsters, one of the neat aspects of the game is anything vaguely shaped like a gun can act as a gun. Um, so they have like mailboxes that shoot letters and packages. They have um, a pillowcase that shoots pil more pillows. <laughs> um, and, and the humor is like it's contained in and of itself. Like there are yeah. some like referential stuff, 
but it definitely it's not it doesn't do like cheap humor it, like it uses the humor within the universe okay um and so it, it definitely and it's definitely just silly it's not like nothing i was reading made me laugh out loud but it was kind of like light chuckles and just like a light a general light hardness that yeah. i liked i'm not gonna say it's hilarious but it's definitely not the grown into its humor it's like seeing a gore gun for the first time is like hilarious gotcha it's not and it's or like a it's it's just little it's funny it's it's not but it's not like it's yeah i liked it i, <laughs> I didn't i didn't groan i didn't groan and if the groan was there it was very intentional that they were going to make you groan with yeah pun. and that and that as you're talking about this that was my concern it's like oh god it's that oh, yep ha 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 we get it and as long as that's not there i think it's good so mm-hmm. it's random right and y- yes, that makes me hesitate because randomness, I feel like never, I struggle with random stuff just because it never feels like it's done well. It always feels like, oh yeah. yeah, here's this stuff. It's not different than other stuff, but it's different than stuff you've seen before. Yeah. Um, I mean the randomness of this one, because there's a few different ways you can do randomness in games. And there's ones I really don't like. And what I really don't like is where they completely randomize a level yes. in which it's like it's basically like the how the algorithm is working. It's like it's putting platforms where where it's deciding where platforms go, where hallways go, where this goes. Um, and in this one, what they actually have is like little very well designed arenas, and then how those arenas are tied together is random. So they probably have like hundreds of the arenas. Like it's it you will see them repeat after a while, um, but every self contained like little arena where you kill all your guys and go on the next one that all feels like really well designed. And the enemy counters, it feels like they and enemy enemy encounters. It feels like those are pre-planned, so it's like it's not just gonna be a bunch of random enemies. It's be like, okay, it makes sense to have like ten really weak guys in this room, or like three weak guys, two medium guys, one heavy guy. So everything, every encounter feels like a well-designed experience. It doesn't feel it doesn't have that general randomness of like um, dead cells. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get into dead cells too much, uh, but dead cells, all the randoms, all their levels are completely randomized, and it just doesn't feel like a to me those individual hopping around stuff doesn't feel well designed while the just the general running around the arena feels really well designed and really intentional um so i really like that so that's that's the randomness i see is like it's intention a lot of the the minute to minute gameplay is intentional and and pre-designed while the maybe what gun you have you bring in that room is going to be randomized or maybe this room tied to this room is going to be randomized but there are very well defined rules. Like every every level will have a shop, so you know you can rely on like there's at least gonna be a shop there. Every level will have a boss door, and you know that once you get to the boss door, once you go to that boss door, you're done with that level. You know that every level is probably gonna have at least one treasure chest. So there is some things you can kind of plan for. So it feels like you're getting better at game. It never it never feels like you're at the mercy of the randomness. Yeah, you're not just randomly, oh, I lost this time because I didn't see X, Y, and Z that should normally be there. Yeah, 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 exactly. It, it feels like, um, I think this is actually a part of the major update because this was actually a complaint they had previously. But um, I think now when I when I play that game, I feel like there's no such thing as a bad role. I only get better roles. Um, so it never feels like I'm totally outgunned. It always feels like, you know what? No, maybe because I ran out of ammo, I used that one gun a little too much. You know, that is probably what set me up to not be as great against the boss. And it, it, it always felt like it was my fault that I died. It never felt like the game's fault. Gotcha. Um, I mean, not never. Like, once or twice, I'm like, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a game like this, if it's once or twice, that's much better than I feel like 90% of these games where I feel like yeah. you get five minutes in and you can already decide if this is going to be a good one or a bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's because, like, you could by, like, the end of the... When I, when I quote-unquote, beat the game, there, the game definitely ends on, like, there's way more to see. Um, so I will say, like, I went through... I beat the final dungeon... But it did end on the "there's still more to see" thing. Um, so I so I'm like, I guess I'm done with the game. But there's still like, I, there's still like, they definitely leave a massive carrot on the stick at the end for you to go chase that I would actually am planning on doing. Which is, um, is spoilery <laughs> stuff. So you so you have four characters, and um, at the once you beat the final boss, you're given this mission that's basically it's like, well, the whole goal of the game is that you need a. The whole goal of the game, I guess I never actually described this, is that at the end, the in this gungeon, there's a gun that can shoot the past, that can kill the past. Um, so, okay. <laughs> and it's actually really the gun itself is very funny um, when they do show the gun. Eventually, I'm not gonna spoil that. Um, but you need to build the bullet, bullet to kill the past. So basically, what it is, you go through the whole game, you defeat the final boss, and then you need to build that bullet so that every time you beat the game again with a subsequent character, you go to their past. You can, you can see what's going on in their past. 
is there enough like lore and backstory in this that that's interesting yes oh yeah for sure like it's really weird like they like every item has like a pretty detailed description oh. there's like characters that are telling very interesting lore things weird like there's a sh- there's like a shopkeeper who's like has a really horrible boss and like he's like a slave to her and you're not really quite sure there's like weird there's it's got an interesting lore to it and that's why i like it because it's very silly but it like takes itself it takes its lore seriously that like yes this is silly but we're gonna follow and adhere <laughs> to these rules that we set up nice um and it does and i and it does make me feel like hey you don't know, actually do want to go back and build that bullet yes i actually do kind of want to be at these extra characters but i do feel at this point i was given a satisfying final boss i was given a final satisfying fight that if i want to go for that character mystic i can but i did feel like i got a full game out of it nice yeah all right well that is enter the gungeon which i know yes now on switch kind of on everything i think at this point it's one of those games that i feel like it's on literally anything you could name yeah but we are workforce gaming You can follow us on Twitter at Workforce Gaming. Subscribe to us on YouTube. See you later. Bye.